Hello again, and welcome back to RP0 America. So we've had some glitches, but I think I've figured them out where the orbit of one of the craft is just changing when I switched which craft I was focusing on. Well, that's okay. So here we are in orbit, both craft, and I've moved over to the um, to the station again. And I've got it over to you know an orbit that has one parameter as a by 300. Uh, so let's see, what is the orbit of the other guy? So I want the other guy to be lower. Uh, so right now we are, it's 22 minutes in the future, so let's just add an alarm for that. Let's see. Station plane correction. So we want to get them aligned, uh, and we want to end up where the, um, the crewed portion is lower. Because it's further behind, we want it to complete orbits uh, quicker. So switch over to... And from this craft, we want to get it into you know, as low of a stable orbit as we can, um, com considering its current parameters. Okay, we need to target the station. I'm just <laughs> pessimistically checking to see if it was the thing that was off plane. Let's see, set as target. So we could do the plane change from either craft, right? Either could could switch over to the sharing the same plane as the um, as the other, uh, but. Right now we've said it got it set up to be on that one, and from this craft we intend to adjust its orbit. So our next uh, spot for it will be in seven minutes. It seems wait that seems confusing. Oh right, it's of course 23 minutes. Um, okay, so at about the same time for both crafts, so he's going to be here where we want to push that orbit down. Uh, so we'll wait until we're as close as possible to that. Okay. Yeah, it seems like it pretty much is exactly at the same time. So we'll ignore the plane change for that one for now. Uh, we'll focus on this because it's more important to get this orbit down, such that we can start, you know, catch up more and more. Because you can see the distance there decreasing slowly but surely. But we want it to be decreasing all the time. We want this craft to be lower than the station at all times uh, before they rendezvous. So somewhere around here, around our our own periapsis, we will do a retrograde maneuver to bring this down to 300. Get in there. Mm. So pretty much when this is flat, I know that's going to be the right time. So close alarm. So we're going to be past the ideal point to make that maneuver, but that's okay. This one's, again, this is more important. That's now it's lit. I guess my screen is just a little dim. All right. Uh, so we are getting pretty close to that. So let's just point the right way, and then use our RCS. All right, so we're pointed retrograde now, and do a bit of an RCS burn. You know, pretty high thrust on the um, on the service module uh, RCS engines on this, so it doesn't take too long to bring it down. And you can see they're reflected now that we're having, going to have quicker orbital periods by being lower. We're seeing this decrease, so it'll take fewer days to for them to sync up. Well, f less time. That's I guess kind of a proportion. You know, if we go from say ten to nine, you know, it's ten percent less time or whatever uh, to sync up. But because we're not behind by a full orbit, it's going to be a fraction of you know, that time to actually complete the catch up. Just the smaller this number is, the more uh, you know, different the orbits are in that regard. Okay, nearly there. 300. Oh, not, not quite. All right, there we go. 300. Let's call it that. So now we um, are three minutes past for the other craft, but you know, no reason not to complete some part of that. So the next thing for this craft, uh, it's in the lower orbit. So this, we want to make sure that they're both passing through this same spot where we are. Oh, okay. Well, apparently it's too low. So we want them to both be passing through the same spot over there on the opposite side at 300 kilometers. So we're going to switch over to the station again. And then we're going to either you know, make a bit of that plane change or we're going to we're gonna plan regarding how to get the orbit of the station so that they're definitely passing through that same spot at the uh, now the apoapsis of about 300 kilometers for the other craft. All right, nice, they have stayed in the same plane. 
Okay, AP. So we are. We'll have to be. We'll have to wait until we are over here at the you know 300 point, which is great. So they both share the same spot. Uh, technically, this station is a little lower. Uh, I'll bring it up to 300. Let's say. Okay. So first we will. But in the end, we once once we've uh, docked them, we want them to move. To, you know, together as a combined craft to the highest orbit we could achieve, um, you know, uh, reasonably with them to reduce the amount of drag because we want the station to stay up as long as possible. Okay, so we're going to do what bit of that plane change we can, just make sure this engine is off. Yes, it is. All right, and then turn up the thrusters and do just a bit of this plane change maneuver now. All right, can't. Point. So we have a node, so we'll point towards the node, and then we're going to get this itty bitty thrust from the station, because it's it's a heavy station, so it makes sense. Uh, but also the RCF thrusters aren't particularly powerful. I hadn't anticipated you know, doing using uh, using this to complete uh, as much of this mission as I as I currently am. We've got yeah, we've got the solar panel on. I may as well open up this. No reason not to. I don't think there's any unique science for it to pick up, but you know, once the people are on board, there there should be some. And so, as we complete this burn, this is going to decrease. And because we're not exactly at the ascending or descending node, uh, it's not going to be per a perfect change. And also, it's going to cause the ascending or descending mode to move uh, because we're not doing right at that point. You can see it's well, it's slowly but surely it's moving just a little bit. Or so there's that's the uh, apos, uh, and that's the closest approach. Where is the ascending? Yeah, it's kind of buried in there. It's buried in there as well, and it's gradually moving, just a little bit. But because we're we are right along this this axis, uh, we're not having any impact on the uh, apoapsis, apoapsis and periapsis. Oh, we're just passing over over Florida and everything. Hello down there. All right, so we've completed a bit of that maneuver. Uh, we haven't moved it, you know, too much, but we've completed part of this uh, of the plane matching. And it, it's that's why it's good to have two active craft because if you had to complete all, you know, all plane changes and all rendezvous burns with just one craft, it's it's more challenging. And that's in in practice what happens in reality with anything trying to rendezvous with the International Space Station. It's it's not going to move a single meter per second to to match your orbit as something coming up to meet it. It's just too big. And what little engines it has on there it's using to station keep to to you know to stay in orbit to fight the gradual drag of um, of the atmosphere and such. Alright, so that's moving. Leveling off. So that's not too bad. So we've we've made a bit of a dent in that. So let's turn those off. Alright. So now, when we're over at 300, we will we will bring uh, we will bring our periapsis up just a little bit. So that'll be our next maneuver. Um, so we will. Well, this is this is pretty obvious. Um, let's see, target position and the ascending node is now over there. All right. So we'll warp until we're over here. You know, from this perspective, it looks like we're rotating along our axis from the ground. So you know, to, to point the uh, point the camera at the Earth all the time, the craft itself would have to be rotating at a very small rate to counter that perception. All right, so we're obviously going to have to change um, positions. So we want to make a prograde burn. Come on, trying to click there, prograde. So we're going to have to go point toward the node. That's in part why I included these uh, these thrusters up here, mostly for that. So because they're off the center of the mass, they can be used to adjust the orientation of the craft rather easily and quickly. All right, and then we'll crank up the RCS to make that prograde maneuver. And that's going to bring up our periapsis until we're at about 300 uh, kilometers by 300 kilometers. And similarly, you can see here, the, the this maneuver is also reducing how long it takes for our orbits to sync up. So all good things. This is just not, not a real number, I just dragged it in the right direction. So it could easily, I could just click node and have it point. All right, and let's use a bit of time warp. All right, eight, 
nine. Oh, and now we're having a bit of impact there because we're not a, we're not precisely at the the node. So that's good enough. All right, so pretty close to three hundred by three hundred. Not too much of an eccentricity. Uh, so now we're going to open up a new window. We're going to pull up the Rendezvous Planner. Let's see. So there's an autopilot, but I never really use that. That's because unexpected things can happen in RSS compared to stock. All right, so we're we're fairly closely aligned in planes. We could definitely make an adjustment there. So that that might be our next move. But let's see, intercept with a home and transfer. So it's telling us in 21 hours, so a whole day, it's suggesting that we make a change that will bring our orbits uh, into sync. So we don't want to wait quite that long. So we're going to be making an adjustment to you know, one orbit or the other. Uh, to correct that, but first we are going to align planes. All right, I suppose there's no reason, no need to orient our craft yet. So it's you know the scanner is on on the station. Okay, so we're getting there now. All right, and we're only going to get a partial alignment uh, because again, uh, the the you know, the RCS thrusters on this thing just aren't very powerful. All right aligning this way and we can turn on the RCS to thrust us forward. Oop, yeah, that's pointed node sure. And low thrust. So the, we're gonna uh, reduce this as much as we can and then we're going to figure out what kind of what maneuver. So with this, we want this craft to be in the higher orbit. Um, and so the point at which we're going to, because the the other craft, so see 300 by 200, so this is the arc through which both of us are going to pass. And so the higher an orbit the station is in, the fewer you know th fewer orbits it's going to take. Um, I've got this on, so right, yep. So the fewer orbits it's going to take uh, for them to match up. So I'm going to wait until we come back around over here, let's say, uh, or to Let's see. Oh, we're, we're, we're still in this arc, so here's where it hits 300, we're at 300 here, so we're aligned very well in this, this portion here. So I may as well also be thrusting forward a little bit, because that's going to push up our, pair, uh, our apoapsis even further, uh, which will put us just a bit more out of sync, and it will give the other guy a bit more chance to catch up. And that's going to make it easier. It'll take fewer um, orbits, uh, called phasing orbits, until we've synced up to the same position, rather than taking a whole day because of the portion. Uh, it's actually falling behind us, which is interesting. We should be in the higher orbit than it now, I think. We're in 300 by 300, and they're in 300 by 200. So, not sure why it says it's you know slowly moving further behind. Maybe, are we currently very slightly lower? No, I'm not sure why. Anyway, so we want to Let's, let's also go prograde and let's see where does that move it. Okay, so we're moving in this direction, so we'll do that. So I can't quite, I can't tell it to lock in this position. I can't, you know, just hit SAS like I usually do. But if I were to look up um, our parameters and just, I could use it to lock to surface, say. For now, this will do. I'll just kind of let it float in between these. And it's also, at the same time as we're canceling out that plane difference, it is also pushing us to a slightly higher orbit. So if I tell it to intercept with a home and transfer, so it's increasing, it still says yes, so it says 19 hours, so it's still kind of thinking the same thing as it was before. But you know, this is changing all the time. So intercept with a home and transfer, so it said 17 meters per second, 20 hours. Yeah, the higher this, this is, the better it'll be for us in the end. So let's see, heading 135, that's not too bad. So surface vital to be a heading of 135 and a pitch of what we're pitched zero, I think, right? So now it'll just hold this position. Okay, I'm tell it to intercept the home and transfer, 20 hours, 30 meters per second. So it's still thinking similar, similar ideas about the intercept. So distance to target, relative velocity at closest. So you know this is still going to be really crazy because we're so you know we're we're many orbits apart from each other. Intercept at home and transfer. Still about the same thing. 
it might be a little more clear from the other perspective because, because to be honest, we what we'll, we'll be doing is the other craft is just a lot easier to maneuver. So once they get close, once we have the inter uh, an intercept um, planned, we'll be doing the final maneuvering from the crude uh, capsule because it is just a lot easier to control. You know, a lot more RCS power. Let's see, intercept with Homan. So I think now it's cut an orbit off. Not sure. I don't know if there's a um, a custom window. Let's see. Let's see. Target. Don't know if there's one that will just tell you straight how many orbits it will be until you p eccentricity inclination phase angle. Yeah, I don't think there's one that'll tell us very exactly clearly how um, how many orbits away we are. Intercept with Homan. Yeah, so we're decreasing the number of orbits it's going to take, but still, you know, because we're just very gradually creeping up that value, it's not having a huge effect. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the nice slow videos uh, where you're trying to rendezvous two craft in orbit using uh, a, a minimal amount of time and a minimal, minimal amount of RCS, but you know, lots of planning and lots of mission time. I'm okay with that. Okay, so let's just shut that down. So you know, we've brought down the relative inclination a bit, so if I tell it to intercept with a home and transfer, now it says it'll be 16 hours. It'll suggest us do a burn like that. So let me look at another thing. Let's see, match, intercept, da da da. So there is that rendezvous autopilot. Let's see what that looks like. Engage autopilot, final distance, maximum, no. No auto warp, uh, turn off RCS. So engage autopilot. It says in 40 minutes it would want me to make this burn. Max number of phasing orbits would be five, so that'd be five total orbits of the of the planet. Uh, disengage. So what if I told it six? I would expect this to be lower. Let's see. No, about the same. So it must be targeting for the same thing. So I might actually let that catch up, um, let it carry that out and, and find out. Uh, but yeah, this has been episode of RP Zero America, just bringing the craft into the same orbits, closer planes, uh, so we can rendezvous and dock in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.